All right, welcome back. Um, so today I thought we would start uh, just doing some inlay on our fingerboard. Um, and you can really do this at um, any time um, from, you know, when the fingerboard's not glued on the neck or, you know, once it is glued on, uh, you can do it then as well. Uh, I'm going to do it now. Um, um, just because I think now is not the right time to do it. Um, I'm, so I'll do that before we carve our neck. Um, so we'll get this laid out. Um, and then we'll move to my peg head overlay and I'll be doing my Minnesota uh, symbol up here. Uh, but I'm gonna drill these out um, before we do that. So I'll just do that, show you how to do that. And then I'll jump back into that uh, Minnesota. And then, um, then I can do some side dot, um, side marker dots as well. Um, I'll clean this up a little bit more and get that exactly where I want it before I do that. Um, but just thought I'd start with um, our fingerboard uh, markers. Um, so as you can see, I got quite a few tools um, laid out here that I'm going to be using. Uh, first, we need to draw where our markers are going to go. Um, and so you're going to need your, your inlay, whatever you're going to be using. Um, so this is for those who are just doing inlay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of beautiful banjos that don't have markers on the top, so maybe you won't be doing them, or maybe you'll just be doing side markers. Um, it's always an option too. Um, so I'm going to use these. I got these little gold-colored pearl inlays, and then I'm going to be doing a gold star on the fifth fret. Um, so I just got all these, um, so I'm going to be doing those in various frets uh, down the fingerboard here. Um, and so first we're just going to draw this on and then I'll start talking about this other stuff. Um, so I'm going to start on the third fret, be my first uh, fret marker. Um, before I used to measure, you know, halfway points. Uh, vertically and horizontally um, but I just saw an easier method is you just make an X from one corner to the next and you're gonna want a pretty fine tip pencil for this process um, and so when you make that X your center point is going to be right there in that middle. So it's easy enough for when we're doing one one dot, or one marker. Um, so, so what you can do, if you do have your side or your fretboard, your inlay, you can put it in that position. Um, let's see how it looks. Just eyeball it. Make sure it looks good. Um, I got two little things that I use, two little tools here. I think these are both from Stu Mac, um, but they're pretty handy. This one's more of a sharper point, um, and then this one's a little bit more rounded. Um, but these help me hold my uh, inlay in position. And for these inlays, I'm just going to draw a little circle. Oops, there it moved. Just put it back where it was. And so essentially, I just drew this circle right here. Um, and got that drawn on there. Um, so there are multiple ways uh, that you can drill these. Um, and a lot of people use a drill press. Um, so if you had a jig and you had your fretboard either on or off the neck, you could just go down with your drill press uh, with like a brad point uh, bit and just go along on your markers and just drill those into the right height. 
Uh, I'm going to be using my Dremel tool. So here I got my Dremel 200 again. And I'm going to be attaching this uh, router base. Uh, it's just a flat base and it keeps everything nice and level and steady. Um, this is another Stuart McDonald um, purchase. But this essentially just screws right on to this base. Um, so I'm going to be using that. Um, so let's continue here. So I got my third one. The fifth one, I know I'm going to be doing a star. Um, I'll come back to that one and just keep going on these other ones. Um, so we got third, fifth. And I'll be doing my seventh fret. Um, so for the seventh one, I'm going to be doing two um, markers there. So three. And so this one, let's see, I'm going to be going in. So we know our string is that one eighth of an inch from the fretboard on each side. That's our essentially where we're going to be. And so what I like to do is stick my fret markers right inside that one eighth of an inch. So it sits right between your first and second string and your fifth and your fourth string. Um, so these are these represent our strings coming down um, and then so we don't want to we don't need to do the X on this one to find the center one because we're gonna be doing two um, so I got this this is that one where it measures both ways so I'm just gonna find the equidistance part so it's sitting right about that 16 going both ways 16 30 seconds and I'm just going to put a little dot right there right inside that line. And same thing on this side. So right inside there. All right, I'm going to spin this around. Sorry, I like to work better this way. And then kind of just draw a line here and attach those so I know that they're even. Just drew a line straight across there. Um, and get your little dots. So there's that first string, roughly where it's going to be. So I want this thing right sitting right inside that. Uh, so the string's not really going right over it. Same thing here, just string right there. Um, it's right there. So just eyeball it, and that looks good to me. Um, looks like I drew it on there, good. Um, so I'm just gonna try and hold that down without it moving. Just draw a rough circle around there. That's pretty good. This you can use that center line too that I drew across and make sure half circles on one side and halves on the other. All right. I know you're thinking like, oh, look at those circles are pretty rough. Um, so I know this line's gonna be the outside. I don't wanna go beyond this line. Um, so with my when we route these out, I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out and keep checking until we get to this full uh, circumference. Um, so no worries there. All right, so we got a star that's going here, seven. I'm gonna put two dots. Um, and this is all preference where you want your markers. People sometimes put them on the ninth or the 10th. Uh, it's up to you. So seven, eight, I'm gonna do mine on the ninth. Um, so here again, I can do an X because I'm gonna do one dot, start in the corner. Down to this corner. And All right. So that looks good there. Let's take another circle here. 
this one. Oops. Moved on me a little there. All right, so roughly that's good enough. All right, so we got seven, nine, 10, 11, 12. So always double check your frets. Make sure you got everything lined up right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All right, so this is the 12th. And again, we're gonna put uh, two on there again. So I'll measure um, out again, one eighth of an inch from our string path. All right. All right, so we got our string path there. And again, I'm gonna use this ruler here and find the middle. So this looks close to 12, 30 seconds each way. So right there. Let's do the same thing over here. There, we'll line those up, connect them. All right, and so our line's going up right there. So we're gonna just put these right on there. So eyeball that. See how that looks. You know, something like that. All right, so draw those ones on. Three, five, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then I'm going to do one more on the fifteenth. Our fifteenth. I'm going to do an X. All right. Put that right in the middle. Give it a quick look. Looks about right. All right, so that's good. I'm not gonna do one on the 17th. Um, since it's on the very end, we know where that is. Um, all right, so next thing I'm gonna do is do the star here. So we're gonna take your star, and a lot of these stars, they look better one way or the other. I don't know why. Um, um, and so here you have, you know, this is all symmetrical, and then it jumps into this thicker, this wider spot here. Um, so for the star, I just like to eyeball it. I don't draw out my lines and try and line up exactly where it needs to go. Um, Cause it's sort of a transition fret space and you almost want it, you know, somewhere in between this center and this center. Um, so, so I feel like it's just best just to look at it. Um, so I'm just giving it a quick look. Looks like it just comes this way a little bit. All right, and I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna try and not put this down and not move it. All 
there are other, other options too where you can get like yellow um, paint like Crayola paint um, that kids like play with or use the water-based stuff um, <clears throat> and then you would see how rough that that's pretty rough just connect those put that star back on there all right and then one thing to note too is like i was saying these stars look better one way or the other um, maybe just mark put a little mark on there so you know what's the top so i'll just put a little dot on this star make sure that's the that's facing upwards um, but like i was saying before you can use like yellow paint put the yellow paint on here on your dots um, let it dry and then once it's dry you put your inlay on it and then you would use you know something like this like a, a sharp sharper object and you etch that yellow paint um, around your inlay that works I think equally effective um, I, I don't do that I mean I just go like this um, even though this looks a little rough um, when you're filling this with uh, the ebony dust and the epoxy mix uh, that stuff really um, uh, finishes with a um, pretty um, sorry what am I trying to say um, you can barely see the the difference between the fretboard and your your filler so it's it works pretty good so I'm not really too concerned with that all right so we got our third we got our fifth seventh ninth twelfth and fifteenth so everything's drawn out and then now I am ready um, to start routing um, these holes out um, so I'm just going to talk about how we're going to be doing that. So with my Dremel 200 here, I'm going to take this little sanding drum that we used earlier. Um, take this little bit off. Um, so this is a collet. Um, and I needed to use a smaller one to that goes with these uh, little router bits. Um, I got these from Stumac too. You can get those from LMI as well. Um, but you're going to need one of these smaller collets. Um, so you put that collet in there. So here's, I got these little, uh, it's like a thin one and then a medium. Um, so medium, I'll do the bulk of, or the medium, I'll do all my circles um, and most of the star. And then I'll move over to the thinner one for the finishing on those star points. Um, so we'll start with the bigger one. Put that back on top there. Um, and then here's that router base from Stumac. Uh, this thing's pretty awesome. Just spin that on the threads there. And so I can see my bit coming out the bottom here. And so what I do is I know like these stars. Let's see. I think these are the same thickness. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to use this star. Just place it on the bottom here. If you can see that, and I can tell I've done this before because that's right where I need need it to be. That's a little. Um, so I will adjust this. Bring that down a little bit. Um, so when we're routing these. We want this to be as flush as possible. We don't want it to sink underneath the fretboard uh, when we're uh, putting in the epoxy. Uh, we don't want this to go underneath the fretboard. Then you're gonna have to plane the whole f uh, fretboard down and it's all gotta be even. Um, so it's a pain in the butt. So, um, so I try and get mine inlay just so it's barely sitting over the top of the fretboard uh, if not flush we can get a flush kudos um, that's the best um, 
All right, so I got this where that needs to be. I'm just gonna check my dots here. Yeah, that looks good. Um, all right, so I got this ready. Um, another valuable thing to have is one of these Optivisors. Um, not necessary, uh, it is an optional thing. Um, but if you want really solid lines and really want to get a good view of you know what you're looking at when you're uh, routing, um, this works really good. Um, what else? And then, so we're going to be using uh, a two-part epoxy, um, and so this is just heavy-duty uh, five-minute setting time. Um, Loctite, you can get this, you know, anywhere, Menards, Home Depot, any of those stores. Um, and so we're going to be using this, and I'm going to be using some epoxy or uh, some uh, ebony powder. Um, like I was saying before, with your, uh, your fretboard and that you cut off or, or you sand it down, you can use that powder. And mix that with the epoxy and that'll get you a good result it's the same thing but you can buy the uh, uh, ebony powder um, for various sites as well so all right so I'm gonna start routing this I'm gonna change the camera angle so you can get a little bit of uh, better view of what I'm doing all right so we got a little camera help from my daughter here so just so you can get a good view of what we're doing here so we're gonna start with the third um, fret here I got my uh, fretboard marker ready um, so I got my base here I made sure all these are locked in um, and so what I do is turn it on and I just lower it, lower it down right into the middle and then I just blow away the, the dust it all over it <laughs> right. just be careful when you're shutting it off and raising it up or that you don't all right, so I need to go a little bit more. I'm just looking at my lines here. Looks like on the top a little bit. Try that. All right, a little bit more. So as you can see, this one turned out really good. This one's flush with the fretboard. Um, all right, I'll show you how to do, how I'm gonna do the star, and then I'll do these rests uh, off the camera here and um, put those in, and then we'll get it into putting it in the epoxy. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start with this medium uh, size bit that I just used on the dot, um, and then just start in the middle of the star, work my way out to the points. Um, and then switch to my uh, thinner um, bit. Just take your time, let the bit do the work. Don't be pushing it around too much. You don't want to break it.
You see it's smoking, you know it's uh, getting a little hot. So you back off a little bit. So we got it pretty good there, if you can see on camera, I think you can. Um, so I'm going to switch to the, the thinner one and we'll get that cleaned up. Yeah. Swap that one out. Good camera work, Lennon. <laughs> All right. Then again, you want to check your thickness make sure your bit went in just like before the same height um, so got a ways to go here uh, I'm not using my optivizer on this um, but I could be Again, if it's too wobbly for you when you're doing this, you can always uh, move it to a, a, a vise. Um, all right. So we need to do the bottom. I'm going to have you guys look at this real close and see how much room I have there on that top. Like, you know, that looks, you know, like a bad half-ass job. But once that epoxy is in with the ebony, um, you guys will see, like... It'll all look pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna work on that bottom a little bit. Let's we'll see where it gets hung up. Alright, so it's almost in. This tip here, two bottom tips. Just be careful with your inlay too that you don't pull on it and put too much pressure on it and it cracks. <laughs> sitting in um, it's you know nice and flush if not just a little bit over the f uh, fingerboard there um, so that's it for that um, I'll do these other fretboard markers um, off camera so you don't have to sit and watch but I think you have the idea now just watching those um, and then I'll take my inlay out and then we'll go into uh, getting the epoxy mixed up with the ebony and then putting it in for a final so all right we'll be right back 
All right, we got all our fretboard uh, markers um, all routed out. So now we are going to do the inlay and get these all set in. Um, so I'm going to be using the epoxy like I was talking about earlier. It's two part, we have the resin and the hardener. Uh, and I'm mixing with, uh, this is it's called black furniture powder. Um, essentially, looks like the epoxy or the ebony mix um, that you can get from your fingerboard too. If you want to use that, you can do that to match the color. Or if you're doing rosewood or whatever, you can take that. All right, so I'm just going to take some of this resin. This is just on the back of sandpaper that I used. A little hardener. About half and half. And I'm just going to take my powder. Typically I always put quite a bit on there. Usually it's always too much. And then I'm just taking this little tool here. And just mixing that. black putty uh, this one had a five minute set time so just keep that in mind all right black powder i'm just gonna brush off there all right so we're gonna start here i'm bringing this sandpaper up to the fingerboard so i don't get, make it too much of a mess and then i'm just gonna fill that hole in a little bit and if it goes around it don't worry we're gonna be sanding this off all right so i got one there just gonna grab one of these marker dots and then I'm just gonna push that in find it there you go and then I typically just cover it up with the epoxy um, if you found that when you were routing you routed too deep um, don't worry about that it's not ruined um, one way one thing you can do is when you're pushing in your inlay just don't push it down all the way and the epoxy or you know put more epoxy mix underneath it that'll bring it up to the fretboard level but you just want to make sure everything every little corner is covered all right so i got a star got my little marker up at the top and there, just squeeze in. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit more around these outsides here. And I'm just pushing down on this, see if there's any air bubbles. Get by those points. And all this will be sanded off. All right. Same thing here, seven fret. Let's just do all these, fill all these in. Here, as you can see, I mixed way too much. Fifteenth fret. Where did we leave off? There you go. Oops. And one 
more. All right, and that is it. Clean this little tool off. Um, and then I'll just let this sit overnight and then tomorrow morning or tomorrow we can sand this down and we'll see our results. Thanks guys. All right, here we go. We got our uh, inlay all uh, in the neck and the epoxy has had some time to cure. Um, so I'm gonna take this piece of wood that I have here with some adhesive backed uh, sandpaper. Uh, it's about a 120 grit. And so what I'm going to do is just go over the fretboard here and just start sanding this down. It's going to hit all these high spots. best to do this with a mask um, really don't want to be inhaling the pearl dust it's pretty toxic for you Some of these look like they're getting good. Get around the star a little better. Getting there, Just a few more high spots. And we'll sand this uh, evenly. It's all it's done. Can do this with an orbital sander too. Uh, this is just a little bit more controlled. One more here. Look here, a couple of these edges need to clean up. All right, that is about it. We'll do some final cleanup um, using our piece of granite and sandpaper but essentially that's it um, as you can see on the star like I was talking about before you can barely see um, you know it's pretty not very noticeable um, all that 
said and done and that is it thanks guys